Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Core XY 3D printers are all the rage these days. And today I'm looking at Two Trees latest offering, the Two Trees SK1 3D printer. This printer is packed with all of the features, boasting an insane 700 millimeters per second print speeds, running clipper firmware with input shaping and motion advanced for super smooth prints, and three Z-axis motors for automatic tilt leveling. But does the SK1 meet these lofty claims? Let's find out. Before we begin, this SK1 was provided for me to review by Two Trees. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so you can help support my channel at no additional cost to you. So let's get into it. The Two Trees SK1 is a filament-based 3D printer with a total print volume of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters. It is a Core XY configuration, where the hot end is mounted to the gantry at the top of the printer, and two motors attached to the frame work together to move that gantry. Because these motors are stationary, they can be large and powerful, which allows for fast and accurate motion. This allows the SK-1 to have print speeds of 700 millimeters per second with extremely fast acceleration. All of the axes use linear rails for smooth motion at these speeds. To be able to print at these speeds, you need an extruder and hot end that can keep up. The SK-1 has an all-metal volcano-style hot end capable of heating up to 300 degrees Celsius. This allows for a wide range of materials, including high temperature materials like nylon. You can also need a beefy extruder to keep up with those 700 millimeters per second print speeds. And the SK-1 has a dual gear direct drive extruder that easily has enough grip to feed filament at full speed. I am not the biggest fan of the extruder, however, as there is no tension release lever. To load or unload the filament, you must go through the menu's loading procedure. You cannot simply release the extruder and pull the filament out. It also has a filament runout sensor built into it. At the front of the hot end is a powerful cooling fan which provides enough cooling for such high speed printing. A word of caution though, this printer is loud. At full speeds, with the fan running full blast and the motors working the hardest, this printer is tough to be around. You would not want to be in the same room as this printer for long periods of time without hearing protection. At modest speeds, the fans and motors are still very noticeable, and even at idle, the case fans are still at 60 decibels. At the top of the hot end is a drag chain that keeps the filament tube and power cable safe. That chain works great, and there's no risk of damage when moving at full speed. The filament tube leads to the spool holder on the right of the machine. Moving down to the bed, we find the magnetic, flexible spring steel PEI bed. A textured print surface provides plenty of grip. I never had any print failures due to poor bed adhesion. After the print has finished, you can pull the bed right off and give it a quick flex to easily remove the print. The bed is very easy to replace, as there are two guide bolts on the edges that make aligning the bed to the magnet very easy. I am a little concerned about gouging the magnet around those bolts over time, as the sharp points of the bed can scrape the magnet a little each time that you replace it. The bed itself is supported by three independent Z-axis motors and linear rails. This allows the SK-1 to adjust the tilt of the bed, making the automatic bed leveling even that much more accurate. There is an induction sensor on the hot end that it uses to probe the bed, which by default will probe 36 points around the bed. Then the printer will adjust the Z-axis to compensate for any slight variation of the bed. The SK-1's Z-axis motors are housed in the base of the printer. If we remove the bottom cover, we can see the power supply and the Two Trees T1 control board. That 32-bit board runs Clipper firmware, which I'll talk about more in a bit, and has 8GB of eMMC storage. It has six removable TMC2209 stepper motor drivers, although the main gantry motors are are still pretty loud in motion. On the right of the base, we find an Ethernet port, one USB 2.0 and one USB 3.0 ports, and a debug port, the Wi Fi antenna, and power supply switch and input. I found that sometimes my USB SD card adapter was not recognized if I used the USB 3.0 port, but it works normally on the USB 2.0 port. Moving to the top of the printer, we find the 4.3 inch color touchscreen. The SK1 runs Two Trees' customized version of Clipper, with the UI having a mostly black and white color scheme. The first tab is the print monitor screen, where you can monitor temperatures as well as control the fan or turn on and off the LED strip which nicely illuminates the print bed. The next tab controls temperatures and loads or unloads the filaments. As I mentioned before, you must use the load and unload options since the extruder has no way to release the filament manually. The middle tab is file selection and print history, followed by the settings and calibration tab, and finally the support tab. The menu is not perfect, sometimes the localization is missing a dialog, so Chinese appears instead of English. For some reason, I'm also not a fan of the temperature chart. It starts from the left, which seems backwards to me. I also had a few situations where the touchscreen was recognizing my touches, but it seemed to be stuck, and I had to turn the printer off and on again to get it to reset. One of the main features of the SK-1 is that it runs the Clipper firmware. Clipper is an advanced firmware that enables features like input shaping and motion advance. 
it is able to more accurately control the motors, reducing ringing and echoing on sharp corners. The SK-1 has accelerometers built into the hot end, and in the calibration menu you can run the vibration test. This will vibrate the hot end at many different frequencies and record how much it vibrates. Clipper can then plan for that vibration, and control the motors in such a way that prevents those vibrations. We can see here a print from another printer without input shaping. Every edge has those ringing artifacts as the hot end continues to vibrate. And here's the same print on the SK-1. Those ringing artifacts are non-existent. Thanks, input shaping. Clipper has many other great features. With the SK-1 connected to your network, you can control the printer via the Fluid UI, control the printer, watch the webcam, start and stop jobs, and change configurations remotely. It also has Moonraker built in, so you can use the new 3D Print Log Clipper integration. Automatically send your SK-1 print's history and track filament usage at 3dprintlog.com, and you can create a free account today using the link in the description. You can use any slicer you want with the SK-1. The included USB drive contains profiles and start and end G-code for Cura and Prusa Slicer, and those profiles work very well. Most of my tests were done using Cura 5.5 and the included profiles. There was no assembly required for the SK-1. It arrived well packed and was a matter of removing four screws that held the axes firmly in place and screwing in the spool holder. It arrived with a toolkit, brass brush, a USB flash drive, a TF card, and an eMMC adapter used for updating firmware. There is an included manual, but the instructions are entirely missing the calibration process. There are four calibration steps on the calibration screen, and you'd go through them one by one. The first is tilt adjustment, where it probes the three bed supports to determine how to best tilt the bed. The second is the 36 point auto bed leveling. Third is to manually determine the Z nozzle offsets by using the paper method and adjusting the bed until the nozzle slightly drags on the paper. The final step is the vibration sweep to configure the input shaping mentioned before. It takes about 15 minutes to go through all four calibration steps, and then your printer will be ready to rock at 700 millimeters per second. So let's take a look at how well the SK-1 prints. Overall, I was very impressed by the print quality of the included Cura profiles. The bottom layers are perfect, with matte texture of the bed giving a very consistent appearance. Flat top surfaces are just as smooth, even without ironing enabled. Taking a look at the sample 3D Benchy G-code on the USB, it printed in only 18 minutes. Infill is printed at 361 millimeters per second, with the walls around 300 millimeters per second, and it printed beautifully. The hull is consistent, showing the power of the cooling fan to quickly solidify the layers. There are wisps of stringing on the inside, but I would say that this is a 10 out of 10 Benchy. Next up is the Captain America bust by Eastman scaled to the full 256 mm height. The angled walls are smooth and consistent, and there are no ringing artifacts around the sharp edges thanks to the SK-1's input shaping. The overhang on the chin is also perfect. This is a very detailed print that the SK-1 did an excellent job with. This Desert Kiss dice tower is much of the same. It's hard to distinguish the individual layers with this matte red filament, but the print is very high quality. I did find something interesting with these low poly squirtle. These low poly prints are normally excellent showcases for input shaping as each edge is prone to causing ringing artifacts without input shaping. And that's generally the case here. Ringing is mostly absent. However, there are certain angles that seem to have a periodic pattern on them. I'm not sure if this is a result of the Core XY struggling at those particular angles or speeds, or some other kind of artifacts. If you have an idea, let me know in the comments below, please. All of my other tests were the same. Very high quality prints, even when pushing well past 300 millimeters per second print speeds. Prints all remained properly stuck to the bed while printing, and easily released themselves when the bed cooled down. I did have a few issues during my test. The first thing I ran into was connecting to Wi-Fi. The firmware had a bug in it where if your Wi-Fi name contained spaces, then it would fail to connect. I reported the bug to two trees, and they said it would be fixed in the next firmware update. I mentioned my issues with the control panel earlier, where the menu would sometimes be unresponsive, or the printer would freeze. I also had an issue with the included USB stick. I had a G-code file that appeared to have been corrupted, and it would freeze halfway through. I had no errors from Kira, and my 3D print log entry had the correct G-code, so I think it might have been a USB drive issue. I switched to a different USB to store my G-code on, and I never had that problem again. Finally, the instruction manual was lacking vital information about calibration. During the nozzle offset calibration, if you are using the textured bed, after the nozzle drags on the paper, then you must lower the bed another 0.1 millimeters before saving. The instructions do not mention this, or any calibration step, but a PDF buried deep within a firmware upgrade file mentioned this step. Before I adjust the nozzle down another 0.1 millimeters, I wasn't getting any adhesion, but afterwards I had no adhesion issues with the bed. You can't baby step the Z offset from the control panel, only via the clipper UI, 
So I can see people getting frustrated by this if they assume that the paper test was all that was needed. In conclusion, I think that the Two Trees SK1 is an excellent printer with great potential, but the instructions and menu give a bad first impression for new users. The printer hardware is great. I was printing at speeds that I have never printed at before, and the print quality is amazing. The SK1 can really push out plastic at mind-boggling speeds, thanks to that 300 degrees Celsius hot end. While I wish the printer was quieter, there is a trade-off between print speeds and sound levels. And the features of Clipper are awesome. Input shaping and motion advanced are game changers for print quality. And I can't wait to experiment more of that firmware. And I just love the look of the printer. It sits nicely on a shelf, and it would be easy to enclose if desired. I hope to continue seeing firmware improvements that would smooth out glitches in the menus. Editor Chris here. As I was rendering this video, I got the notification that Two Trees released a version 2.0 of the firmware for the SK1. All of my tests here were from version 1.11.9 of the firmware. I'll upgrade to version 2 and have a follow-up video shortly to discuss if they resolved any of these issues. Thanks! Now back to past Chris. With a few minor bug fixes, the SK1 would easily impress both 3D printer beginners and longtime enthusiasts alike. The Two Trees SK1 sells for $599 US dollars, with sales often bringing it down to $499. It is competing directly against other Core XY printers like the Creality K1 and Bamboo Labs P1P. The SK1 is less expensive than both of them, while beating the K1 in print size. If a noisy printer does not bother you, then it's hard to beat both the speed and the value of the SK-1. Even with its few flaws, I'd still highly recommend the Two Trees SK-1. So thank you all for watching my review of the Two Trees SK-1 3D printer. What was your favorite feature of the SK-1? Was there anything that you think is lacking? Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. If you are still in the market for blazing fast 3D printers, why not check out my recent review of the Creality CR10 SE. It is a bed-slinging printer that still boasts 600mm per second print speeds. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.